these little errors drop out around about the baby's 18-month birthday, which typically coincides with the acquisition of between 50 and 75 words. So it takes them about six months to amass 50 to 75 words, and then something fairly amazing happens, which is sometimes called the naming explosion. And all of a sudden, they start learning language like it's going out of style. On average, from this point onwards, <laughs> they're learning nine words a day. And that continues until they're six years old. When they start school, they start school with a vocabulary of around 12 to 14,000 words. And if you've tried to learn a language recently, I, I think you know what an amazing feat that is. Because don't forget, these are 18-month-olds. They're still working on potty training, dressing themselves, feeding themselves, getting up and down stairs. They have a lot to do. And they're just incidentally picking up language at this amazing, extraordinary pace. So the naming explosion is really quite noticeable. And it's oftentimes accompanied with the what's that game. So the what's that game that 18-month-olds like to play goes like this. You're sitting with the 18-month-old, and he goes, what's that? And you say, computer. What's that? That's my purse. What's that? That's the light switch. What's that? Um, that's the, sometimes you're at a loss. I, what, what do you call that thing? It's a screen. What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? They'll play it all day long, as long as you'll provide the words that go to the specific reference. So some people have suggested that actually what's going on is that they have this insight after about 50 words of how language is supposed to work. Oh, every single thing has a name. Everything has a name. All I got to do is learn them now. So what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? And then they drop out the overextension and underextension errors. Another perspective is that it's just a matter of brain maturation. That either driven by, partially driven by the input or purely genetically programmed, at 18 months, something happens in the language areas of the brain where there's just a tremendous proliferation of um, uh, connectivity that contributes to this amazing uh, rate of learning. But in addition to acquiring all these words, they're also starting to put words together. They're using syntax or grammar. So they're adding prefixes and suffixes to words to change its meaning. They're putting words together to create uh, meaningful utterances. And they start doing this around 18 months or so with a two-word stage. This is sometimes called telegraphic speech because it doesn't have any of the small functor words. It's just, it's just the major words to get the idea. Like in the old days, when people had to pay per letter, they used to send uh, telegrams to each other using this similar kind of um, grammatical but, but very pared down language. So this really ch is a game changer once they put words together. So just imagine they've got the word teddy, they've got the word eat, now they've got a couple of choices for how to put that together with completely different meanings. Teddy eat means you put him in the high chair and you pretend to spoon food into his mouth. And eat teddy means you put him on the plate and pretend to carve him up for dinner. And they do not make a mistake between those two. They do not make word order errors from the very beginning. This is one thing that's really, really striking and very different from Coco. They get grammar from the time they start using it. They make very few errors. And then we get a three-word stage, um, and then basically all hell just breaks loose, and they're just blah, 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 talking all the time. At this point, developmental psycholinguists are measuring in terms of mean length of utterance, so ha how many words they're putting together in sentences, not just how many words are in the vocabulary. Um, and what starts to become noticeable now is the occasional error. The errors are pretty rare, so when they do come out, people really cotton on to them and study them and try to work out where they come from. Because, um, because they tell us something about what's going on in the child's mind. I'm going to give you one example of this. Now, I've got this child's speech sample. This is a three-and-a-half-year-old girl, and she's telling her version of Star Wars Episode Four, A New Hope. We're not going to listen to all of it. We're going to listen to part of it. And she's distractingly cute. 
but I want you to try you put on your psycholinguist hats and analyze the language. First thing to notice is she's incredibly fluent. Remember, two and a half years ago, she was going da, 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 ba, ba, ba. And now listen to what she can do. She can put together an extraordinary narrative that is accurate, that conveys the story, and that has a lot of complex grammar in it. You might also notice that she's already picked up a dialect, so she's got a particular accent already at this young age. And most importantly, she makes a grammatical error. So just have a listen. Kenobi, Kenobi's kind of a teacher. He's teaching Luke how to learn how to do his little light up sword. He has to try to block the little Pokeball. <laughs> he tried to do it without seeing. Obi Kenobi sometimes moves things around, sometimes he disappears. Princess Leia got out of jail and out in the spaceship, and they got the big thing that blowed up stuff. They, we blew it up together. It blowed up Princess Leia's planet. But don't talk that to Darth Vader, he'll get ya. It's an exciting movie. <laughs> if you want to see that again, you just go to YouTube and type in three-year-old retelling Star Wars. It's very popular, as you might imagine, because she is distractingly adorable. But did you notice, first of all, how fluent she is? She's only three. Second of all, she does have a dialect. Anybody pick it up? You know what her accent is? American is right. Do you know which regional dialect by any chance? Anybody? She's a Northwesterner. She's, it's a very similar to the Canadian dialect and very different from like Southern dialects, which is where I'm from. So she, her language is already very finely shaped by her environment. And the most important thing is she made it an error. Did you hear it? Yeah, she said blowed up. She insisted on saying it three different times. This is really important because that's not the way her parents speak, most likely. That's not the way the majority of adults speak. So where would she have gotten this locution, blowed up? That's, if, she's just, if she's just picking up language, from her environment. It's, it's a puzzle as to where she would have got it. Maybe other kids say it, but she probably would have heard many more instance, instances of blew up than blowed up. So why does she do it so insistently? Well, researchers have studied this. Um, this is called an over-regularization error. In the midst of all this amazing, perfect language, um, all children tend to do this. Um, and they do it in this really, really interesting developmental pattern, which is known as a U-shaped curve. And we love these things in development. We get so excited when we see one of these, because most of our curves just go straight up. But here's one that begs to be explained, because if you look very closely at the language of young children, early on, they make no over-regularization errors. So they say blew up. They say ran fast. They say held the kitten. They say ate all my dinner. And then starting around age three or so, all of a sudden, they start saying it wrong. They had it, and now they're saying it wrong. And they say, blowed up, like she did. Eated my dinner. Runned really fast. Holded the rabbit. And then it takes several years for them to get over it. And what we think is going on is this. Early on, they're just memorizing individual lexical items. So if it was an explosion and it happened yesterday, you say, blew up. Then something goes on intrinsically inside the child's mind round about preschool whereby they work out the rule. Now, obviously not explicitly because we all have to sit through, through horrible grammar lessons later on at school. Implicitly, they're working out the rule that when you're talking about something happening in the past, you take the stem and you add ED. And they start doing that across the board. But because English, and in fact most languages, are, is irregular, has these irregularities, they make these mistakes that really stand out. And then what they have to do is relearn all of the specific exemptions to that general rule. 
So this demonstrates that language learning isn't just this simple process of memorizing what words to use in order to refer to specific things. It's this, it's this complex, multi-layered um, developmental process where things are going on underneath the surface um, that, that are really quite abstract.